Hello, hello, hello. This is Rebecca in the beautiful Northwest giving you a shout out here. We're going to talk about something very cool that I have actually used for some time, but haven't used it in a while. And I was just sitting and thinking about how I could better organize myself and my low content books. Now that I have several thousand, it gets, it gets a little overwhelming. And when I'm also thinking about projects that I need to make and getting ideas and where to put them, there's Evernote you can use, there's Google Drive you can use, there's a pad and paper. And also right here, I have a monthly planner that I created. And this is the free download for that monthly planner or you can also buy it on Amazon Perfect Bound. So I can leave, I'll can i leave the links down below here in the video. So you can pick it up either as a PDF, download it, punch holes in it, put it in your own notebook, or buy it Perfect Bound from Amazon and make me feel really awesome because that'll give my planner BSR. This has been a super popular planner with my students and I use it personally every day. But you know, when you're having a planner, a paper planner, it's all well and good for me to jot down my ideas, but it's really hard for me to actually keep track of things that are digitally based, like my graphics and keyword ideas and different um, books and research that I'm doing. So in trying to meld it all together, again, Evernote is a great solution, but Evernote kind of costs money at some point in time. And so Trello is a great source. It's a great source for compiling information. So when you go to Trello, you basically start off with this blue expanse. And what I did is for all of us low content book authors, I created this super duper awesome board. Now this is a public board. So when you go to it, you can't do anything to it. But what you'll do is you'll sign up to get your own Trello account. And then all you have to do is you'll click on menu. You'll go to more and you'll click copy board and then basically you will uh, copy this board to your Trello board and it will have all of this goodness on your board so you can actually go through and make changes to it as you want to. So the beautiful thing about Trello is that everything is movable everything is movable. Everything that's on here can move from board to board uh, and you can add to it. And now they've created some really cool options where I can actually take a card. I can title the card and say, uh, <clears throat> my book series, my book planner for this week. And once I add this card, oops, save this card, click off of it. If I want to add a checklist that's literally anywhere else on any of my other cards that are in this document, I can scroll through and these are all the different checklists that I have. So I can, let's see, book information, title for a book series. Let's look at that one. There it is. What's the brand? What niche is it in? How many books are made? So I don't have to rewrite all of that information. That is like the coolest thing since sliced bread. So I can basically title this uh, for the book for this week. I can uh, go in and we'll click off of that. So now that's here. If I want to have an example like this book here, I'm going to be making this beautiful teacher planner that comes from my friend Kate. And I have an image of it so I know exactly what I'm making, this teacher planner. Here I have links to, my re to the template that I'm using. So if I want to reuse that template again, awesome, right? And when I make the templates for this, I have them all in Dropbox. And so I can actually link to the file of 
the templates that I've already made. Now that is really cool. And so I can go back and reuse those interiors and know exactly what I'm, I'm getting, uh, getting when I open this file. So my covers will be in here, my interiors will be in here. Here's my research that I did. Here's my research on Pinterest. I just click on the button and I'll go to Pinterest and it will look at the different teacher planners and binders that I was looking at to get inspiration from. Um, I can click on Amazon and it'll take me to, oh, this is another website where I was looking at school planners. Uh, I can have a link to my Amazon research. I have it down here, my Amazon research. So I have it all in one place and I have it all on one board. Then I go through and I say, what's the brand? It's going to be my teachers. What's the niche in? It's going to be elementary school teachers. How many books am I going to make? So I'm going to make maybe 25 books in this series. What are the sizes going to be? So my research tells me what my sizes are going to be. And I could put those notes down here. So I'm going to make 25 in this batch. I'm going to make my research shows eight and a half by 11, but eight by 10 is also popular. So maybe I'll see how it goes and I'll make some more at that size. Uh, some examples, the elementary school teacher planner, so that, that was a link that was up here. Um, and then some categories uh, that I want to look at. So here's all the categories. Now I got these from researching in Tangent Templates, uh, which has a category researcher. And so these are all the education categories that I have the potential to stick my book in, right? But even cooler, when I make other additional teacher planners beyond this education planner that I'm making, then I can also make planners for teachers that are teaching science, mathematics, language arts, history teachers, art teachers, architecture teachers who teach architecture. I can make books that appeal to teachers that are teaching science and technology, social science, reading, all the librarians in the library. I can make a planner for the librarian. Oh my God, my head is exploding. I can make planners that are for teachers that are in rural school districts, that are homeschoolers, that are teaching philosophy, uh, that are kindergarten teachers, that are more high school professional development. So this gives me all these ideas. People ask me, where do I get the ideas from? This is how you get the ideas. This is telling me everything that I need to know to make future planner books that are taken out of the niche where everybody else, where the red ocean is, as they say. So I'm finding my blue ocean of the different kinds of teacher planners that I can create that appeal to so many different teachers. Holy moly. So that is the beauty of using this Trello board because I don't have to hunt around. So one of the recommendations that I would make is when you get this Trello board and you copy it for yourself, keep this as your main copy, all right? And then make another copy for 2019 and then you can have this clean so when you make, you can come back and start fresh for 2020 and then start fresh for 2021 because I have this set up so that you can have all of your project ideas. They're all broken out here by month. So I just click on the month and as I'm getting an idea, uh, I can go in here and I can type in to my month. Now I have all of this filled out for you. All right, so what you're seeing, this is what you're going to get on this board. It's just, I hope you love it. Um, so what holidays are coming? So this comes right out of my print on demand planner that I created. What are the, so this quarter, what are the holidays that are coming up? What are some good keywords for some niches that I want to explore? Uh, maybe I'll be crafting some titles and descriptions, research the niche, gather templates and create them. Um, what's my weekly upload goals for this month? So I click on this as I fill in this information um, to add what I want to, to do here, right? 
Uh, and then uh, what's my weekly upload goals? What are my category ideas? Some different uh, content ideas, um, adding anything beyond the, what, what are my calls to action? Do I have those written down? Gather my images, okay? So thinking ahead of what I wanna do. Now the cool thing about this also is that I can take this, I'll copy this list, so this whole thing is a list. So this is for 2019. I'm gonna create that list. It'll populate all these cards here, right? See that? Now I'm going to go, and I have this blank board right here. I'm going to go and I'm going to move this list to, let's see, what did I call it? I called it potential, I think. Maybe it's that one. I believe it's that one, yes. And look, it pops up right here. So now I can take these, I can make another list uh, and I can say January ideas. Move that over there. Then I can make February ideas. And put this in this list. And then I can make this March ideas. And then add here. And so now I can actually work on just this quarter without a ton of other distractions. Now all I have to do with this board is highlight this little gold thing and on all my boards, my boards sit all right here. So I can easily click back and forth between my boards and if I want this to stay here, I can just click here, always keep this menu open and so now it's always going to stay here, and so I can easily use this as my navigation and click back to my main calendar um, when I want to, right? So that's this one. And what I would recommend doing is when I want to open something and I want to work in both, I need to just right click just like you would on any computer and open link in a new tab. And so now I have this board and this board open. Let's let it open. My computer's a little slow because of the video, but this is the board we're working on anyway. So I don't know why that's taken so long. It's got to populate all those images. So this is the one that I just opened here. And so that is the beauty of using this. So that's the one I just opened. I'll just close that down right there. So I have the quarters broken out. So now I can work specifically on the quarter and I can work just for January and I can maybe make uh, one for week one, week two, and week three. And then I can start going through and looking at what I want to uh, work on for this week, get my ideas all together and everything like that. Now, one of the things that you also can do, and this is going a little bit beyond basic what I wanted to talk about, but you can take these lists and just copy them over to any board so that you actually have access to any of these um, checklists on any board that you have. So these checklists are easy. I'll, all I'd have to do is copy this uh, card and then move this card over to that board and then I already would have it populating. So let's see if I can do that. I don't, I want to copy it. Uh, let's see, and I want to copy it to this board. And I'm going to copy it to January Ideas. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm copying this card. So I made this card. 
I'm copying this card with all the checklists, the labels, the attachments, and the comments. It's asking me what board I want to copy it to. Now, obviously, I would call this board quarter one of 2019 or 2020, whatever. It's asking me what list. I need to fix the spelling on that list. It's asking me what position to make it. Create the card. And now when I come over here, voila, there it is. So that's what I'm going to work on on January. And everything that was on that card was just moved over. Now on the main one here, I can decide to keep the card here. I can archive it since I already have it on this board over here. I don't want to confuse myself. So I'm going to leave that up to you to decide how you want to organize this board yourself. Um, so if you know me, you know that I have a four-step approach to creating journals that has really helped hundreds and hundreds of my students um, make this a simple process. You research, you create, you upload, and then you repeat and scale. So each one of these right here is my researching board, my creating the books board, which actually moves into my object, my project ideas. So this would be the ones that are in progress right now for me. Then ready to upload, they would move, once this is done, I would move it to upload. And then I could move it to a completed board down here, stuff that's finished, that's published. So I can put it any way that I want. And for any of you that like to do things like Miracle Morning, or you start your day with a meditation, or I love to watch Abraham Hicks, then you can also have your daily inspiration on your board too. And you can move it all the way over here to the beginning if you want to, so that it's right, so you can start your day and even chunk your day out by hours. So that's again, something that you'll want to do yourself. Trello is free. There are paid plans, but you don't really need to have a paid plan to do this the way that I'm doing it. All of this is on the free plan. So I hope that you love this Trello board if you're a Trello lover. And all you have to do once again is you'll go to show menu right here. You'll click on more. You'll go down. Uh, let's see, where do I want to do it? It says copy board. You'll scroll down to this section right here to copy board. And then that will copy a board to a board that you already have created. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this. I hope you love this. Come join us in my free Facebook group or if you're ready to commit and you're ready to get going on this low content book journey, hopefully you'll join me in my mastermind and join all of us that are getting our stuff done and ready and prepared for quarter four. I just wanted to share this with everybody because Trello's free. So I'm making this freely available because you can find this board uh, on the internet now because I made it free for everybody to find. So hopefully you enjoy it and have a great day. Happy publishing. Bye-bye. Talk to you later.